to enjoy it and hoping that they could pass this off to their kids. Go on. Go on. You can talk about foreclosures. You can talk about banks. You can talk about the investment that we made. You can talk about the stock market coming back. You can talk about we're about to turn the corner. But the hopes and the dreams of these people, it's gone. And you just don't get it back. And all of you know that some of the jobs that were lost to people who are 45 and 50 and 60, technology has filled that gap some kind of way. The job really may not even be there. And then you find that everybody opens up their door to let the free market work its will. I got a job to do, how much would you charge? How much would you charge? And of course, the person that came here for a better life from a different country, as most all Americans did, except those who came in chains, they give it a cheaper price. They're willing to work harder and longer. And we open up our doors and give you the jobs, allow you to dream. And then all of a sudden, they say, that you're taking away jobs from Americans who are unemployed, taking advantage of the fears that people have during these economic times. Well, I can tell you there's no fighter in the Congress like Guterres. Louis Guterres has been a national spokesperson in pricking the conscience of the Congress and reminding them that this isn't for illegal people. This is for people who signed up to become Americans. This is for people <laughs> that don't want to bomb you. This is people who want to be a part of you. These are people that are in the hemisphere. These are people that, quite frankly, we passed a silly law. Listen to any lawyers in this group. We passed a law that allowed Cuban Americans, with all due respect, <laughs> to be able to say that if they had evidence that Castro took their parents' property in Cuba, they could bring a case in a federal court in the United States against Cuba. Can you imagine what the Indians and the Mexicans could do if they tried <laughs> to be involved in the structure in trying to change this country around to do what's in our best interest to make certain that those people that are proven that they want to have a better life for their families, for America, and to be partners, that we sooner or later will find that combination in the House and the Senate and the White House so that one day, and I hope one day soon, we would be able to say, do you remember just like with civil rights how long it took? And do you understand as long as there is racism, the struggle will always continue? So we must always make certain that we're prepared for it when it comes, that our kids get that education, that we don't let up, and that we get and expand our forces. And this is what I like to say before I sit down and or take questions. Stronger than the Constitution of the United States of America. Most all of us truly believe that there is a higher authority that dictates the conduct of how human beings treat each other. Whether you're talking about the Koran, the Bible, or the Torah, something is in there that talks about Good Samaritan, traveler on the road, helping the less of our brothers and sisters. There is something innate. They don't ask how you spell your last name or where you came from. They ask, have you got a problem? Then all of a sudden, morally, all of us have to look around this table and say, I don't have a problem, but he does. His kids were born and raised here. And they're saying that they're sending me back to a country that he's never known. Whether it's in the Caribbean, uh, whether it's in 
uh, Mexico, this child only knows how to be an American, and that yet they're trying to snatch the parents who came here. They even say, change the Constitution so everyone now has to prove who their parents were. It seems to me, Alfred, and I'll get in trouble with you because at my age it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> language and culture, except how we treat human beings. How long has it been, Linares, that you could go to a country and everyone could be looking for you, the police, the, the, the soldiers, but if you could find your way into a church somehow, that church gave you asylum. That church protected you. What a good time with people killing each other all over the world. The chaplains there with their guns and crosses and they're there with their stars of Davids and they're blessing the guns and all these things. In Palestine and in the holy city they're killing each other. What a time for the church to move forward and say, all of you are my children. And no matter where you are, you should be treated like a human being. That means that mothers and fathers shouldn't be torn away from their children. That like any good Samaritan or any good democracy, any good country, we should try to help. And in doing that, don't we make our family stronger? Don't we teach people how to really treat their brothers and sisters?